we have seen our first pilgrim. Note the lost look, the meandering. <laughs> That's what I'll be doing soon. We saw more pilgrims. It's the first of these we've seen. <laughs> Am I going in the wrong direction? <laughs> Well, we're just about to check out of the Secotel Europa, which is the hotel we've been staying at in Pamplona. It's a nice room. The uh, view wasn't the best ever, <laughs> but it's been okay. <laughs> this is the view. <laughs> But it is a nice room. It's been very comfortable. We had coffee making facilities and a fridge and a nice bathroom. <laughs> and there is a Michelin starred restaurant in the building as well. <laughs> We're back in the main square and it's interesting that it's so different just a couple of hours later 
that it's so full now. Even the pigeons have come out <laughs> They're at the water fountain. And the sun's out. It feels entirely different. I don't think it had been raining earlier, but I think they must have been washing the streets. It had a feel of it being quite wet and overcast, and it's so different now. So this is the Cafe Arunia. Maybe we'll come back here later. I don't know. We came hoping to have breakfast, but they were still shut. Um, and I'm going to read to you a little about it from the Lonely Planets website. It says, opened on the eve of San Fermines in 1888, Cafe Arunia's dominant position on the main square, powerful sense of history, and Belle Epoque Decor make this by far the most famous watering hole in the city. In addition to the long list of wines and spivets, it also has a superb range of pinchos and light meals. Hemingway was a regular here. <laughs> You've got El Rincón de Hemingway next door. Um, indeed, he helped immortalize the place in his novel, The Sun Also Rises, which of course the alternative title for that is Fiesta. But there we go. It's actually a really beautiful facade as well. friend of this town, an admirer of uh, fiestas. <laughs> We're in the park of the Media Luna, which is so-called because of its crescent shape. And it said that you could get nice views of the river from here, and you can see the river, which is just sort of down there. I'm just having a wander around. <laughs> <laughs> the city walls ahead there. seems that what I thought were the city walls, we couldn't quite work out why we weren't inside the city walls and the reason was because they're not in fact the city walls, they are Fortan de San Fortin, sorry, de San Bartolome, bastion of San Saint Bartholomew basically. And it says this little fort or demi-lune giving the gardens their name belongs to an ambitious project <laughs> project created in 1726 by the engineer Verboom and only partly constructed in the 18th century. So. So pretty. Enseñanza que 
Well, we've been walking around um, quite a bit of Pamplona. We're now in the grounds of the Cathedral of Santa Maria. Um, and there were many bells. We just <laughs> happened to arrive here at midday. Um, bells from churches elsewhere in Pamplona as well, but it seemed to be from both church uh, bell towers here. Um, the church dates from the 14th century, but is on the site of an earlier Roman church or building. Um, so I don't know whether it's open or not. We might have a wander inside. <laughs> so here we have the Museo de Navarra, which is housed in an old pilgrim's hospital that dates to 1556. And it says that the museum, I'm, I'm reading from, again, it's a different website actually, planetware.com. The museum displays a diverse collection ranging from prehistoric archaeological objects to 19th century fine arts. Um, there are various Roman artifacts, medieval religious paintings, and old Moorish treasures. Um, and they all relate to Pamplona's early history. Well, this is where they do the ball run. They start down there, come up this street. It's 800 meters in total and go up here. And I'm rather glad I'm not here during that period in many ways. Mm. I feel for the balls. It must be an amazing atmosphere though. Town hall, it looks very different now that the sun's out compared with earlier today. And that's the street we just walked up. We returned to the cathedral because we wanted to go up the bell tower and found out that it's only open on Mondays and they start giving out tickets at 10 o'clock. So I don't think we'll be able to do that. We might go around the cathedral when we're actual pilgrims. There's a reduced rate for pilgrims, but not just because of that. I imagine it's quite a nice part of the pilgrimage, really. Um, I've been drawn to this cafe here. It's in a beautiful spot, and I just feel like a coffee. So I think we might stop here. <laughs> Camino shells. We start tomorrow. Hmm? Oh, a pilgrim is coming. There he is. <laughs> well, we just had our coffee in this cafe, which is, I suppose it's a bistro, it's called Bistrot, and I went to the loo, and it was an experience. They, um, it was like an art installation. It's all metal, all around the walls, and you become aware that it sounds as though there's bird song, and there is. They're playing the sound of bird song, and maybe there are some monkeys, and there's a porthole in the door, and I thought, can people see in? But actually, no. There's a light opposite which is a bright red light and it's sort of beaming. I don't know what it all meant. It was rather pleasant, but very metal with a jungle ambience through the sound and a red light. So if you're here, I recommend Bistrot. It's opposite the cathedral and their toilet is an art installation. <laughs> on one side we have modern, on the other we have, I suppose that's modern, but it just looks beautiful with all of the wrought iron work. And in front of us, just look at that. We've got the Ministry of Defence down there. And then coming up, we've got a Ministry of something else. Uh, we're heading towards the Ciudadela, the Citadel. We can have a walk around there. It's in a star shape, which I think will be quite interesting. Comandantia Militar de Navarra. The still past the Ministry of Defence. Military. 
headquarters. So we're now in the Ciudadela. That was the entrance. There's an arms house, a gunpowder house, a mixed pavilion, an oven. <laughs> It's interesting that it's the 16th century and 17th century and we were saying that we hadn't actually heard much about that period yeah, we're when we were in Barcelona that. in particular. Huh. Shape of a pentagon. The ramparts are in a strange shape. I think that rather than being quite like a pentagon, it's more like a snowflake because it is symmetrical. But it has all of these little bits that stick out. <laughs> Over there we have buses, which is where we'll get the bus to Saint Jean Pierre de Port a little later today. In an hour. A little bit more than an hour. Aquí tiene pinchos. <laughs> We're having pinchos. Which are little tapas. And I went and selected which ones we wanted at the bar over there. They had them on display. There were various things that had things inside them and I wasn't sure what was inside them so I had to ask. That was quite fun. <laughs> Son pinchos. Pinchos. That is nice, isn't it? That me, I thought it been thinking that the architecture changed quite quickly to lots of houses with sloping roofs, different types of roof tiles, feels much more mountainous. Sun, but it looks as though it's smoke. Maybe it's cloud. We're not too sure. It looks like smoke. So it was definitely cloud. <laughs> We've been seeing kites here, red kites and buzzards. I don't know whether you can see the red kites then. There's actually two flying. One just going into a bit of a swoop there. It was stopped in once as well. Very cloudy. <laughs> well, here we are. <laughs> We're at the Gide Compostelle in Saint Jean Pierre de Port. Pretty 
Cheers, Liz. So the pilgrim office is at the top of this hill. I don't know whether you can tell how steep it is, but it's quite steep. Here's Andrew <laughs> making his way. <laughs> So that's the pilgrim office and we've just got our pilgrim passports. <laughs> we spoke to a gentleman called Andre who did the Spanish ones because uh, there was nobody available to do the English ones. <laughs> so that was quite fun. Huh? We've been walking around Saint Jean, Pierre de Port, and um, not sure whether to get walking poles or not. Here, I had thought I might get some cheap ones and then leave them behind because we couldn't bring ours on the plane. But I don't really want to use them. I know a lot of people use them. Um, anyway, we thought that from reading, hang on, from reading on the internet that um, there would be shells for sale everywhere, and. It's a relatively recent tradition anyway, because um, normally you would go and choose one when you got to the far end, but increasingly people are using it as a sign of their seriousness in doing the Camino. So we didn't find any that kind of spoke to us, and one did a bit to me um, in the pilgrim office, so I have my shell. Um, and it's one that isn't one I'd normally think was perfect, because it's got... I think they're from... are they from worms? I'm not sure but it's got these on it. So I like the fact that it's already got a story, it's already got a history to it. Um, so that's my shell. And Andrew has one as well. And we have... We have our passports, yeah, we got those before. Um, so now we're probably going to get a drink and then we have to be at the Gite um, at seven o'clock and they're going to talk to us about what to do with our luggage and breakfast and different things like that.
What we have here is a baguette. It's the long one and four pan au chocolat, a sausage and some cheese, and my shell. <laughs> We're at Jeet Compostelle again, waiting for our seven o'clock meeting with Christophe, I think it is, and um, he's going to talk us through what we're going to do with our luggage. It's been strange walking around here, partly because they speak Spanish, but mostly French, and that's mostly what we're hearing, and it's just very difficult to make that transition to... You ask if they speak English and then say maybe Spanish and they nod at the Spanish but not at the English. So I've still been doing most things in Spanish even though I'm in France and that's a bit strange. The atmosphere is very different because the climate is different. It's humid, it's still warm but it's overcast. Um, and it's just, it's so busy and it's busy with a lot of people who aren't pilgrims which I hadn't really expected and busy with pilgrims as well and not many people are smiling so far that's it's a bit strange I, I'm, I'm feeling like i can't wait to get back to spain at this point even though it's really nice um so yeah and i think that's maybe always the case when you've got a place that has lots of tourists and it's really busy and the people have all been really nice i mean it's it, it's I mean, we just bought these things from the bakery and the lady there, you know, served us with a smile, actually. It, it's a general feeling of walking around the streets that people are um, getting in each other's way a lot, not quite showing the respect for space that people in Spain did. And it just doesn't feel quite as relaxed in general, even though for a busy place, I mean, Pamplona was really busy, but it felt happier <laughs> i think that's the word maybe people are stressed here maybe it has a history of people being under pressure because they're about to walk a long way and that's what we're picking up or i am at least what did you think andrew yeah i did really it feels a bit strange it's very busy and no one's really smiling and talking to each other there's andrew <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so We'll see. Strange to think of heading out of here early in the morning. We've got everything we need so that we can just go. Um, the room I've booked, it's actually in a place that only has shared bathrooms and during COVID we haven't been taking masks off when in communal areas at all. So basically the plan for brushing teeth and things like that is to do it on the road or something, improvise. Um, and maybe that's just one of those things, it's what we've got used to. Um, it's not probably what most people are doing here, but anyway, it's, I'm keen to be back in Spain. <laughs> We're having a traditional Basque meal of chicken basques, and they've just brought us our aperitif, <laughs> which is, we've got, <laughs> it's not what I imagined in France really, but hey, it's fun. <laughs> Our food has come. Chicken basques. Chips. Bread. And we've got some salad as well.
And there we have the Gide Compostela.